In this section, we're going to examine how we can use the stoichiometric coefficients themselves as conversion factors. To do this, let's consider the following problem. Let's suppose you fully convert four H2 molecules to water using our balanced chemical reaction equation. How many molecules of water can we form from these four H2 molecules? So first, I'd like to work this out by actually drawing out all of the reactants involved in the process. So let's start off by looking at our four H2 molecules. I'm going to represent an H2 molecule by two hydrogen atoms stuck together here. And we've got four of these guys. So let's, let's actually physically draw out each one of those H2 molecules. Okay. Now, let's react these H2 molecules with oxygen. So we'll draw some oxygen molecules here in red. And note that the problem doesn't specify how many oxygen atoms we have, or how many oxygen molecules we have, rather. It simply says that we have enough to fully react all four of these H2 molecules. So we might have to add more to this list, right? But what we're going to do is start carrying out the reaction here, okay? We're adding our H2 with the oxygen, forming water. So the first water molecule that's formed is going to use up one oxygen atom. So we're going to use up one of these guys, right? And two hydrogen atoms. So we're going to use up one of these guys. And we're going to end up with something that looks like this. Water molecule. Okay, so we formed our first water molecule using up one of our H2s. Well, of course, we can do this process again. All right. Using up another pair of hydrogen atoms and another oxygen atom to form our second water molecule. And hopefully at this point you can see that we'll do this process two more times and we'll end up with a total of four water molecules. Okay. Now this is really the crux of the typical moles and stoichiometry problem, all right? We have a certain amount of reactant, in this case, four H2 molecules, and we want to determine how much product, in this case, water, we can form. And so solving the problem amounts to carrying out this sort of procedure, where we can see that we've only used up two HO2 molecules to fully react all four of our H2 molecules. Now, let's look at this in a different way. Rather than writing down each and every molecule and doing the step-by-step -step cancellation process as we're reacting them to form products, let's start off with what we're given here. This four H2 molecules, right? And let's see if we can construct a conversion factor that allows us to move directly to the number of H2O molecules. So, of course, the form of this conversion factor would be number of H2 molecules on the bottom and number of H2O molecules on the top. Right? And now this is where those stoichiometric coefficients come in. According to that balanced chemical reaction equation, right, for every two H2 molecules, right, we need two H2O molecules to be formed. So effectively a one-to-one -one ratio. Carrying out this multiplication then amounts to simply you know, writing four, but we've effectively converted from number of H2 molecules to number of H2O molecules, right? So we've got two ways of saying the exact same thing, right? Four molecules of H2O are formed in both of them. We either write down each and every reactant and carry out this step-by-step -step conversion process, or we use these stoichiometric coefficients as conversion factors.
as conversion factors. Now with this in mind, let's consider the following problem. Let's suppose we are starting off now with six molecules of O2, and we wanna determine how many other reactant molecules, how many of the hydrogen molecules are required to fully react our oxygen, right? So proceeding as we did before, we're gonna start off with what we're given, right? We are told that we have six O2 molecules, right? So six O2 molecules, we now need to convert from number of O2 molecules to number of H2 molecules. So H2 molecules is gonna be in the denominator, H2 up top, and we then turn to our stoichiometric coefficients once again to figure out the exact numerical value of that ratio. So we can see there's a stoichiometric coefficient of one in front of the oxygen and two in front of the hydrogen. So carrying out this multiplication, we find that we in fact need 12 H2 molecules in order to fully react with that hydrogen. So we'll write that down in text. So we need 12 H2 molecules in order to fully react with our six O2 molecules. And once again, the take home message is the use of these stoichiometric coefficients to form this conversion factor. Now we're ready to add on another step here. We've seen how we can convert now between the number of moles or molecules of a given reactant another reactant or another product. And now what we wanna do is take it a step further and look at actual mass of reactants or products. The reason for this is you know, quite simple. Anytime you're in a laboratory setting, you're typically going to be dealing with mass or sometimes volume, which we'll talk about a bit later, all right? There's no device that allows us to count individual molecules or moles of molecules, right? What we can do, however, is measure certain mass of molecules. So let's see how we can introduce the concept of mass into these stoichiometric calculations. In this problem, we are asked to determine how many grams of H2 are required to fully react with five grams of O2. So, there's gonna be multiple steps here. So let's go ahead and break this down and identify what we're given. So we are given five grams of O2, all right? And our goal here is to find the number of grams of H2 required to fully react with this five grams of O2. So if we start off with what we're given here, we make a little map. We're gonna start off with our grams of O2. Ultimately, we wanna end up over here with grams of oxygen, but we, see, we saw from the previous problems, in order for us to convert from amount of one reactant or product to another reactant or product, we needed to use our balanced chemical reaction equation, which is serving as our recipe, and the units are molecules or moles, not grams, which means our first step needs to be the conversion of this given mass of O2 to the number of moles of O2. And once we get the moles of O2, then we can carry out that conversion to the number of moles of H2 and convert once again, back to the units of mass and arrive at our final answer. So now we need to look at what sort of values do we have that allow us to take each one of these steps. Well, the first one we already know. If we have five grams of O2 and we wanna know how many moles of O2, well, we're simply gonna to have to turn to the molar mass. Now, the molar mass of O2 is roughly 31, 
2.01 grams O2 for every one mole O2. Similarly, on the, on the last step, in order to convert between moles of H2 and grams of H2, we are going to use the molar mass of H2, which is roughly 2.02 grams of H2 for every one mole of H2. And then, as we did before, in order to carry out this conversion in the center, converting moles of O2 to moles of H2, we're going to turn to our stoichiometric coefficients, where we see that we have a stoichiometric coefficient of 1 for the oxygen, 2 for the hydrogen. So we have 1 mole 2 for every 2 moles of H2. So putting all of this together, we form an expression to arrive at our final answer. Moles of O2, 32.01 grams of O2. Grams of O2 cancels out. We're in moles of O2. Now we use our conversion factor constructed from these stoichiometric coefficients to arrive at units of moles of H2. And then finally carrying out that last conversion we change from units of moles of H2 to our desired units of grams of H2, which gives us a final answer of 0 0.63 grams of H2. Okay. So what we've determined here is that in order to fully react 5 grams of oxygen, you need 0 0.63 grams of hydrogen. Okay, so now let's suppose that we have the required 0 0.63 grams of hydrogen and now let's ask the question of you know, how much water we can actually form in this reaction. Okay? So when we say we have excess of a reagent here it means that we have at least the amount of H2 required to fully react the O2 and then some. So to solve this sort of problem, we just need to focus in on the given amount of O2. So in, in this problem, if we are given a starting amount of 5.00 grams of oxygen, write that down here, all right, we are given 5.00 grams of oxygen, and now our task is to find how many grams of H2O can be formed. So we're going to proceed much as we did before. We're going to start off with the mass of O2. We are going to convert that to moles of O2 to bring it into a suitable form to where we can use our stoichiometric coefficients to convert between moles of O2, and in this case, moles of our desired product here, which is H2O, and then finally convert back to the mass of H2O. Or once again, we are going to first rely upon our molecular mass of O2, we are then going to use the stoichiometric coefficients for oxygen, which is 1, water, which is 2, to form the conversion factor, which takes us from moles of O2 to moles of H2O. And then finally, we're going to use our molecular mass once again to convert back to from moles of water to mass in grams of water. It's roughly 18.02 grams of H2O for every one mole of H2O. So putting all of this together, we start off with 5.00 grams O2. 
use that molar mass, convert grams of O2 to moles of O2, use our stoichiometric coefficients which are to construct this conversion factor which now takes us from moles of O2 to moles of H2O and then finally carry out that final conversion which takes us from moles H2O to grams of H2O which should give you a value of about 5.63 grams H2O. Now remember, this problem assumed excess of H2. And we found in the previous problem that the amount of H2 required to fully react 5 grams of O2 it was the 0.63. Well, in this case, we've got three significant figures on our O2. So if we ask the question of how many grams of H2 are required to fully react 5.00 grams of O2, we'll have to keep another significant figure and we'll get the answer 0.625 grams of H2. All right. Now, here's the question. What happens if we have less than that required 0.625 grams of H2? Well, in that case, we're going to be limited in the amount of product we make by the amount of H2 that we have present, right? And we've got a special term for that. We call the limiting reactant, the reactant in a chemical reaction that limits the amount of product that can be formed. So if we have less than that required 0.625 grams of H2, then we are going to call hydrogen, H2 in this case, the limiting reactant. And this is a question that we want to be able to answer for any general chemical reaction equation. So for example, you could be at, told that you have a certain amount of reactant A, a certain amount of reactant B, they're coming together to form product, which one of them is going to be limiting? Which one of them is going to get used up first? So to see how to solve a problem like this, let's look at the following example. Let's take our hydrogen oxygen reaction equation and suppose that we start, we're starting out with five moles of oxygen, seven moles of H2, and we wanna determine what is the limiting reactant and how many moles of H2O can we form. Now there's a number of ways to go about solving this problem. The way that students seem to appreciate the most is stopping for a second and let's just consider hypothetically if we were to be able to fully react each one of these products. So let's start off by saying, okay, let's suppose we've got five moles of H2 and let's again assume we can fully react that H2 or that O2 to form H2O and see how much H2O we would get. So converting the five moles of O2 to moles of H2O, again, using our stoichiometric coefficients as conversion factors here, we arrive at an answer of 10 moles of H2O. All right. Now let's do the same thing down here. Starting off with seven moles of H2, we can convert that again to H2O using our stoichiometric coefficients, which this time builds a one-to-one -one conversion factor for us. And we find that if you react five moles of O2, you can form 10 moles of water. And if you fully react seven moles, of H2, then you in fact, oops, multiplying here, sorry about that, you can in fact form only seven moles of H2O, right? So because seven is less than 10, that means that the H2 is used up first.
and we call H2, uh, therefore H2 is the limiting reactant. 